Roland, welcome to the studio. How are you doing? I'm great. You look sharp. Well, totally it's, another, it's another day for work. Totally different from what I saw. You barefooted in the water, <laughs> in, in Jita, uh, you Anyanui, know, Anyanui and all Salakopo those places. And all that, yeah. what, what was it when you first went there and you saw the havoc that's been caused by the tidal waves? What ran through your mind? Well, so we had uh, gotten there 36 hours after the incident. Mm. Today exactly makes it eight days when the incident happened. So to get there three days after the incident, it also speaks volumes about the difficulties that they found themselves. So the waters this time are not receding, unlike previous tidal waves mm. incidents. Mm. And it's because, you know, the rain patterns have been different. Mm -hmm. So it means that the ground is already um, very wet. And so definitely um, you're not going to have... Uh, the water is receding as you, as you would expect. And, 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 and it meant that the residents would not have places mm -hmm. to lay their heads. They had to um, sleep on the, on the sidewalks or on people's uh, verandas or just on the streets, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was something that was moving. More so, when I got to find out that... Um, the disaster preparedness of our country mm -hmm. is not up to scratch. Right. It, it, it didn't give me great comfort at all. Because you, I know they have a disaster preparedness plan. That's right. The president directed and, that and it, then be, it be put together. You, it has to be deployed or mm -hmm. activated when there is an emergency. Right. And three days after the incident, I haven't seen that deployment of that plan. I didn't feel comfortable. You had gone there after Kamala Kluche had initially. Yeah, went, he did the war. Yeah, he did the, the first. <laughs> he one. did the world world war. Exactly. <laughs> then you did the second. No, world I went war. to do peacekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> so Kamala Kluche had broken that story, and back to back, we had had about three sets of reporters going and out of there. Something that you touched on right now: preparedness for disaster. It took not more than seventy-two hours to bring supplies to the people woefully inadequate i mean as the records will show 30 bags of rice for thousand people that's a joke like mr francisco kuche says for you again how did the people receive those relief items well the people had no choice than to receive those items physically but in terms of their perception about how those who were in position of authority uh, if you tend to look at governance issues or transparency mm. issues, mm. we will say duty bearers. Um, they really told me that they were surprised that they would not get the help. Mm. Because this is not an incident that had not happened before. Uh, actually, uh, I spoke to an opinion leader in the area, Mr. Andrews Koko, who said okay. that um, he will be 18 January and had witnessed the first tide tidal waves mm -hmm. back in the um, 40s or so, or right. in the 50s. Okay. In the 50s. And the destruction started in the 50s and the 60s, continuing up to today. And for agencies like NADMO, the local government authorities, and we're talking about the various MMDAs responsible, and even the regional coordinating council headed by the minister, not taking this serious, I just, it just told, it just got to me that it looks like we just don't take consideration for things that will matter to humanity and so the lives of the citizens that we serve. Mm. And they were not happy at all. But you could also find that they were at their wit's end. Mm. They, they have nothing else to do. They've lost their property. They've also lost cash amid all that happened because right. this, they say, would mm. usually happen during the day. Okay. But this time it happened at dawn okay. when they were asleep between three so years. they had very little time to, to, to leave the place. To, to leave their homes and, um, uh, and then get to some safer places for, for the properties that they mm. have. Now, the president has not gone to the place. The vice president has not gone to the place. The minister for works and housing has not gone to the place. The regional minister has not gone to the place. The minister for gender, children and social protection has not gone to the place. What did they have to say about that? They were quite surprised that they haven't had the help coming in as they would need it. And the presence of the people were very much important for them. And I'm talking about uh, people because we have all these individuals who do, who uh, compose people. So we're talking about 
the head of the executive, mm. as, as the president, president of our republic, his deputy, and, the and, vice and, and everybody else, or, or vice, as we would call it. And, and, and they were very much surprised that we didn't at least even have either the regional minister, mm -hmm. even if not the minister uh, who is responsible at the national level or at the mm -hmm. cabinet level. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they thought that, well, you know, it created the perception that, you know, when an MPP government is in power, they don't take consideration for the Volta region. And I, I don't know why people in government would let that fester, but it still bothers me a bit. Hmm. Let's take a look at the statement uh, Roland spoke with, giving us a historical perspective of when the devastation started, you know, happening back in the day in the 50s. Take a look at it. I was born 1942. Presently, I'm getting to 80 years now. So that 1942 up to 1947, I started my schooling. And that time, to, if you are at Blakusu, you see the large house, Cape St. Paul, inside the sea. But that time, the sea was far from the town, about five miles. Before you go to the beach, you pass through the coconut trees. As far back 1950s, Nkrumah government, they started of uh, preventing the sea for taking the guitar, uh, the for uh, for resistance, and the police station, Zion schools, uh, YP Bremen schools, when the sea started of coming, no idea has come of making the prevention. The prevention they did that time was using the timbers of blocking. According to opinion leader Andrews Koko, Keta and Nigerian communities now look a pale shadow of themselves. And this is worrying not only for the current generation, but for the generation unborn. When Liman government get out, then Jiri came. It was the time where Jiri we're all trying to get people who should look at the proper way of solving the, the sea erosion. We are worried. Look, Qatar, we have the police station, the central police station. We have the prison for prison stand inside where the prison yard is. Does it clear all those areas? You see, that was a 50 to 60 period of time. So the sea is not going back. It's coming. This is why we are thinking that, what are the governments are doing at all? Are they learning something at all? So that's uh, the veteran that uh, Roland spoke with. I'm sure he gave you a lot more information. Um, and. Did you get a sense also that the two schools of thought, one, to complete the sea defense wall, and then two, to relocate the people, sits well with the people? Did you get a sense that which option were they going for? Um, for, for many people, they are extremely divided. In, in the communities of Salakope, um, we have Jita, Nyanui, and, and those that already have been um, destroyed. We're talking mm. about Huvama. It's about where they were born, the ancestral connection to their homeland, and then the relocation. It's not the first time we'll do a relocation. Indeed, during the Kufu administration, efforts were made. And so you have some um, small houses being built for these uh, um, uh, Two residents, houses, one bedroom, yeah. etc. And you find them on the route that leads you to the lagoon towards mm -hmm. Aplau. Mm -hmm. But it's also about making sure there's some level of preservation of the coastline. That one has to be a national policy. It is expensive, but other countries are doing it. Of course, the ravages of the sea will always come because of climate change, etc. But if we have the national policy mm. also being then well implemented, it also gives some comfort to the citizens. And many of these inhabitants are thinking that looking at the time that we had started 
the sea defense, by this time, if, we, if governments were committed, whether it's a, it's a, I think we've ordered something. Um, there was also an effort that was done mm -hmm. towards um, the till end of the John Muhammad John administration, Muhammad et, right. et, et cetera. If we're making the efforts comprehensively, all the governments were under, uh, undertaking it, then we would have had some resolution. Mm -hmm. Look, we have to be realistic. The coastline is long. It is. It spans several kilometers. It is. So we cannot comprehensively say that the government needs to uh, put in the defenses by way of whether it's brick water or the sea defense to be able to forestall the, wa the waves that will come. Mm. But then the protection of um, coastal life, the fauna and the flora, and the, flora the wetlands, etc., are very important um, to prevent the destruction that could meet other towns. If you go to Keta, mm and you look at the other communities, there's a lagoon okay. that is behind those communities. There's a coastal mm, areas. Mm. From there, you go to Anyako. Anyako leads to areas like Chama and some of those places. So if we leave the sea to get or to cross over the town, mm -hmm. it will mean that it will get into the lagoon. A flow of water uh, will mean that these towns could be overwhelmed. And also will seep into the other towns beyond Anyako. Because if I recall the conversation I had with Mr. Andrew Koko, mm -hmm. um, from a situation as a young man or a young boy that he started seeing or witnessing from the 50s. 1940s, mm -hmm. 50s, and then decades later up to today, mm -hmm. um, seeing that where he lived, his mm -hmm. grandfather had uh, coconut plantations, right. and now several miles, if not kilometers into the sea, it means that by the next 20 or 30 years, we, we may not live to see the state in which we have the current Qatar or Jita Nyanui and all that. And, and that is a fear. Let's compare mm -hmm. that to, and we had a conversation about um, countries that still have difficulties with their coastline, but have more experience mm -hmm. in trying to manage it. The We're Netherlands, talking, for example. The Netherlands, mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit of um, the Nordic countries, mm -hmm. the Scandinavian countries. And, and, and they live on... Uh, on uh, elsewhere, it's, um, if you will, luxurious and to live around the, along the coast. Yes. Ours is it's more, like a, a more like a danger when, zone. When you, <clears throat> when you read about the Emirates mm. and etc., they've lived along the, the, the coast. Of course, um, the ravages of the sea will always be there, but they even do the extent of reclamation. So it is where the commu commitment is. What do we do? Dubai, they even reclaim lands in the sea and sell. Right. You know, At very yeah. high rates. Exactly. It is only in Africa, Republic of Ghana, that when you have a land or you live along the coast, it is a death trap or a disaster zone. But elsewhere in the developed world and the islands of Asia, of Japan, the Philippines, etc., you live there and it is a luxury. Yeah. We live we, we live in our country, we pay top dollar to go to uh, Malta, Seychelles, Mauritius, mm -hmm. and these mm -hmm. are all um, island countries right. or bordering right. islands. So it, it, it bothers many people why maybe perhaps the, the actions are not being taken by the right people. Right. And we've had MPP and NDC in the Fourth Republic, and it looks like the commitment is just not there as it should be. My closing question to you is this. Um, so we're starting a CSR initiative, the Media Save General. Save a Life campaign. Yeah, Save a Life campaign, Media General and the Early Beach Resort and all of that. Uh, tomorrow is happening. We're, we're also going it to... It is? Yes, uh, it's happening. We're uh, trying to rally around everybody to see how much support we can give because, again, I'll say, what if I'd not brought to the people was woefully inadequate. It's, it's a joke, to say the least. Um, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I, I, I think that it's, a, it's an opportune time for everybody uh, to rally around. We've had the former president, John Romani Mahama, present thousands of bags, mm -hmm. over 10,000 pieces of items. Yeah. And we've had a number of corporate bodies under the auspices of uh, the Volta. Caring Sisters yeah, and, and, and all then, of that. Um, the Tidal Wave um, MTN and, and yes, also yeah. the corporate agency also doing their bit. And Media General and the rest of the partners at Early Boutique and Beach Resort mm -hmm. also doing this will come in handy because apart from sharing um, sardines or canned fish and then also rice, gari and some of those things, ideally when disaster strikes, 
you should have makeshift tents mm, that's right. for habitation. That's right. And even warm food. Yeah. Not raw rice. So, like but we decided to have makeshift people. tents as a country for entertainment joints. For, you know, like places. So, mm. so, so that's why the big question about us being responsible more to our citizens, no matter or irrespective of where they are, comes in. We don't have makeshift tents. I, I, I spoke with we don't George. Have, I we don't have even the one that prevent you can use for camping or hiking. Right, right. We don't have them. Right. It surprises I, I, me. I, I and, that, and that to, is sold in game and I, I, Malcolm and I the rest. I spoke to George AC on this platform. I asked him if Natmo has plans of getting evacuation centers ready. He says, no, it's not part of their plan at the moment. They don't have it as part no, of No, no, it's I not part of their plan. plan. I'm even surprised it's, it's that not on paper. Mr. So, George AEC will say that. It's not well, he should have done some good communication around it. But, and said but that the, tru maybe the truth is plan. the truth. I like, him, I like him for his honesty. And it comes back to the earlier thing you had said about the disaster plan. You know, the president had directed that the disaster plan be formulated after the wage out by way, a tremor thing happened. And the president gave that directive. It took forever for it to be done, but now it's been done. Are we implementing it? Are we putting our mouth, our money where our mouth is? No, we're not. And that is why um, Save a Life mm -hmm. campaign from uh, Early Beach uh, Resort, as mm -hmm. well as we have Media General, will come in to yeah, help. Yeah. If the state really was, well, was helping, then this will come in as just complimentary favor. Now right. this is urgent. Mm -hmm. So we have former president and the others also doing that. So, and these relief items are just going to lie. Uh, last these inhabitants or residents just for a couple of days. The waters are not receding as fast as they should compared to the tidal waves that these communities have, have experienced previously because mm. the ground is wet, very um, uh, moist. Mm. And so uh, the residents will find themselves in some hard times. Uh, I'm just uh, being told this morning that one person apparently lost their lives. Oh, sad. Uh, lost a life, so... Um, we pray for the family, but it also means that all the communities along the coast of Ghana are just not safe. If you think that you live here today and you, you are like this, you may find yourself in the next 10 years or 20 years experiencing something like this. What does it mean? What does it mean? It's Thank you. Question. Thank you very much, Roland Walker. He is a senior reporter here at Media General.